It is also called in Islam Kalima of Islam, like La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So this is translation. The second pillar of Islam is performing Salah. Salah, or we say in India, Namaz. Salah or Namaz is obligatory upon every Muslim five times a day. Number one, Fajr, which is performed at early morning before sunrise. Number two, Zuhr, which is performed at noon. Number three, Asr, which is offered in the afternoon before sunset. And four, Maghrib, which is performed just after sunset. Fifth, Isha, which is performed in the night about one and a half hour after the sunset. Number three, third pillar of Islam is paying zakat, that is annual charity. Zakat is compulsory upon those who are rich according to Sharia. So every rich person has to pay 2.5% of his total savings every day to the poor and needy ones of the society. Fourth, performing Hajj. Hajj is an Islamic pilgrimage pilgrim to Makkah, Saudi Arabia. If one is rich and physically fit to visit and travel to there, is obligatory upon him to visit Makkah once in a lifetime and perform Hajj. And the fifth is keeping fast in the month of Ramazan. Keeping day long fast in Ramazan, that is, Ramazan is the ninth month of Islamic calendar, lunar year. It is obligatory upon every Muslim, male or female, who is healthy, adult, and who is not a traveler. The core teachings of Islam in all spheres of life can be briefed in the following five terminologies. Beliefs, that is called Maqai, worships, Ibadat, dealings, Mamla, social life, Muashar, morals, Akhlaqiyat. Number one, beliefs. It means to have faith in oneness of God. A Muslim believes there is no God but one God that is we call Allah. And there are many prophets but God is only one. An existence of his angels. Angels, angels are creatures which are created by light. And that is, that is our creatures which, uh, who never commit mistake and who never eat and we call them angels. So in existence of Allah's angels, in his revealed books, Allah Almighty revealed many books. So we believe all books were true. We also say all books were true, but in many books, people made changes according to their will. So that is not the words of Allah. Many books like uh, the Quran, Torah, Jibri, and many other books which are not mentioned in the Quran, but it is mentioned that uh, many books and small books, which, is, uh, which are called Sahai, they were also revealed to many prophets. In all earlier prophets, Islam believes in all the prophets. It is the part of belief that all the prophets came to this world, they all were true. There are many prophets whose names are mentioned in the Quran, like Prophet Adam, Adam, Prophet Yahu, Jacob, Prophet Yusuf, Joseph, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, many prophets name their stories and their life are mentioned in the Quran and the Quran also says in every part of the world, in every part of the world, Allah sent many messengers and prophets. 
but we don't know who were there. So there are many uh, uh, prophets and the messengers and the religious leaders of other belief. Since they are not mentioning the Quran or Hadith, that's why with surety we don't say that they are the prophets or not. But one concept is very clear in Islam. The Quran says, La min duni so if there are the uh, uh, there are the leaders, there, there are the godly personalities, people worship them or believe in them, then a Muslim should not say ill about them, should not abuse them, they should respect the leaders and the spiritual guide of every religion. Number five, to believe in the last day, the day of judgment. We believe that uh, one day this world will be destroyed and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create again and those who die from the first day of the world till, till the day of judgment, till the day of qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect all of them and then they will be asked about their behaviors, about their good and bad conducts what they did in the world and accordingly they will be given the reward there for the punishment punishment if that is wrong in this world number six taqdeer taqdeer means everything good or bad comes from Allah Almighty and number seven in the life after death that means after the Qiyamah, when the world will be destroyed, again people will be resurrected to be questioned. So first is belief, the second is worships. It means to worship only one God, Allah. And the two in a way which is mentioned in the Quran and Hadith. The, the major worships are mentioned above. Uh, under the five pillars of Islam. And there are some optional and recommended worships like sadaqa, charity, except zakah, and the nafil, optional salah, umrah, that is also uh, a kind of pilgrimage to Kaaba and Makkah, and keeping fast besides Ramadan, and even remo removing an obstacle from the public place, this is also a kind of sadaqa in Islam. Or meeting someone with a smiling face or helping someone, these all are worship in Islam. Number three, dealings, muamla. It means a Muslim must be honest, trustworthy, true in his words and keep his promises while dealing with others and transacting business or doing job. Prophet Muhammad say, Man ghashana laysa minna. If someone cheats anybody, he is not among us. He cheats in any way, in business or in job or in any way. Prophet says he is not among us. And also in the Quran it is mentioned that uh, Fulfill your commi commitment, indeed there will be question about the commitment. Number four, social life, muashrat. It means a Muslim should lead his, lead his life in a way that his words, actions, behavior should not harm anybody physically or emotionally. Prophet Muhammad said, Will I not inform you about your about Mumin, Mumin means believer. Mumin is the person from whom people are saved in respect of their wealth and souls. And Muslims is the person that people are saved from whose tongue and hand. And also in the Quran it is mentioned that a Muslim is strictly prohibited to jail someone, backbite anybody, spy, insult or call anyone by offensive nickname. These all are mentioned in Surah Hujarat, Ayah number 11 and 12. 
Fifth is moral values, akhlaqiya. It means the Muslim should behave with others with good manners. Prophet Sallallahu say, the best Muslim among you is the person who is the most perfect in morals. Festivals and celebrations. There are only two official celebrations and festivals in Islam. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Azha. They are compulsory and celebrated as a worship. Rest are either optional or with no scriptural merits. Number one, Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Fitr is celebrated in first Shawwal. The 10th month of lunar year, Islamic calendar. Just after the completion of the fast of Ramazan, we celebrate this uh, festival, Eid al Fitr. Eid means festival or the happiness. And Fitr itself means breaking the fast. So, it is happiness of completion of Ramazan. In this day, Eid prayer is performed in Eidga, especially in, in villages and in, in the, any mosque in the city. And in, in, in the city like Mumbai, in every mosque Eid prayer is performed. But in other cities, only the set in central mosques Eid prayer is performed. <clears throat> Before Eid prayer, it is compulsory upon every rich Muslim to pay charity to the needy person on behalf of each member of the family which is called Sadaqat al -fitr. If there is a child, one year child or six month child, then it is also necessary for the father to pay charity on his behalf to the needy people so that they can also celebrate Eid joyfully, they can also cook good food at home so this is called Sadaqatul Fitr and Sadaqa or charity is there in the celebration so that uh, we can we can create human values in ourselves and we can respect the poor and fulfill the need of the poor people. It is haram and forbidden to keep fast in that day. That means a Muslim cannot keep fast in, in the day of Eid. The second is Eid al-Azha. Eid al-Azha is celebrated on 10 to 12 days of Zilijah, 3 days. The 12th month of Islamic calendar, lunar year. Eid al-Azha means festival of sacrifice. Azha means sacrifice. In this Eid, in Eid, rich Muslims are ordered to slaughter animals in the name of Allah as symbol, as symbol of sacrifice for his pleasure. And they are instructed to eat only one third of the meal, give the second third to the relatives and distribute the third portion to the poor people in the neighborhood. It is also haram and forbidden to keep fast in this day. There are five days which are the feast from Almighty God and all Muslims are ordered to enjoy that day that Eid al-Fitr and three days of Eid al-Azha and one day more just after the Eid al-Azha. Eid al-Azha, why we celebrate Eid al-Azha? The Prophet was asked why we slaughter animal then he said, actually, it is in the remembrance of uh, your father, Ibrahim salam. Prophet Abraham, or Ibrahim, he saw in dream that he is slaughtering his own son. And he saw many days, he was a prophet. So he understood that God was sacrificed. Then he asked his son, Ismail, who was also prophet later, that uh, I saw in dream that I am slaughtering you. What do you say about it? Then he said, Oh my father, what Allah ordered you, 
please do that. So he took him uh, to a ground and he asked him to lay down on the earth. And he tried to, he started to slaughter him, to sacrifice him in the way of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said by an angel, uh, another animal, and say, I did not mean to take your son from you, but my purpose was to taste you, to see that uh, how faithful you are, that uh, even you are ready to sacrifice your own son in the way of Allah. So in the remembrance, in remembrance of this sacrifice and Prophet Ibrahim's action, Muslims are ordered to sacrifice animal and to eat one third of the meat and two thirds should be given to the relatives and to the needy person. Festive <coughs> Other important days. They are important days, but they are not the festivals. There are some other occasions which have historical importance, but they are not actually festivals, like 10th Muharram. 10th Muharram, when Prophet ﷺ migrated from Makkah and came to Medina, then he saw many people keeping fast on 10th Muharram. Then he asked, why these people, Jews, especially Jews, Jews who are keeping fast on that day. Then he asked why these people keep fast on this day. Then someone say that uh, they are keeping fast because on the 10th of Muharram, Prophet Moses, Prophet Moses, Musa alayhi he got rid of Pharaoh, Pharaoh was an operation and a cruel ruler of Egypt. So he got rid of that uh, ruler on that day. Then Prophet Muhammad said, We also, we deserve more to respect Prophet Moses than he ordered to keep fast on that day. Then Muslim keep fast on that day, but this is an optional fast, this is not a complete, compulsory fast. We see uh, in many places uh, people are celebrating Muharram but actually this is a not an occasion to celebrate. One sect of Muslim, Shia, they, they mourn on this day. Why they mourn on this day? Because the grandson of Prophet Muhammad, Hussain, he was, he was martyred on that day. On, on, on this day, uh, that is 61 Hijri, that is uh, 680 common era, he was, he was martyred in the Karbala in Iraq while fighting against the cruel leader of that time, Ibn Ziyad. So, and he was the, Hazrat uh, Hussain, he was the son of Fatima and Fatima was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that, that's why the mourn, but the majority of Muslims do not even mourn. They say oh, this, this was a sorrowful event, but we don't uh, mourn over any martyrdom because many other uh, great people like uh, Hazrat Umar Farooq and the second caliph and also the third caliph they were also martyred, but uh, we do not uh, mourn, that's why we do not mourn. One sect, Shia, they mourn on this day. And the uh, other day is 12th Rabi Lawwal. 12th Rabi Lawwal, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was born on, on Monday. That's why many people celebrate but uh, celebration is not mentioned in any book of Islam, in Ahadith or in the Quran. That's why majority, majority of Muslims do not celebrate as a festival that day. But some people celebrate and that is also a national holiday in India. And uh, other uh, occasions like uh, 
the night of uh, 15th Shaban, the people, some people also celebrate them, but that is also not occasion to celebrate. That is all only, uh, it is ordered to worship specially on that night too much, that is. What I describe, what I describe is fundamental Islamic teachings and belief. If you see any Muslim doing against them, then that is just their own actions that are not true and actual Islam. Here I wind up my talk, thanking you all great people and beautiful students for paying heed to my words. Thank you so much. Thank you.